My guest today is a fantastic singer and musician. He's currently the singer for the legendary prog band Yes and in the band Glass Hammer. I'd like to welcome John Davison to the show. John, thanks for speaking with me today. Well, hello, Roy. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing today? I'm just fine. Well, thanks for giving me a few minutes. I'm a big fan not only of Yes, but of Glass Hammer as well. I have uh, all the records you did with that band as well, so it's, it's a pleasure. Oh, cool. So uh, right now, I guess, are you preparing for the, for the upcoming Yes tour, or what are you doing uh, right now? We're actually on tour. We're in Canada. Oh, okay, already. Great. Yeah. Well, let's see. We have about um, four more shows in Canada. We've got um, Atlantic City, New Jersey, and then Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And then on April 7th, we disembark, or actually we're, we're off on the cruise. Oh, that's right. Absolutely. Yeah, we've got the cruise. That's exciting. That should be fun. Honduras, Mexico, all of that. So. Those are a lot of fun. Um, so I guess the announcement came out uh, just this week of the uh, new album and the summer tour dates. What can you tell us about that? The choices to do uh, Fragile and Close to the Edge from beginning to end. So what was the plan for this upcoming summer tour? We just felt like uh, it was important to now try the Fragile album in its entirety. Just because, you know, doing the other albums went off so well. Yeah. And that's another, you know, key album that we wanted to touch on. And then also we'll be doing um, sort of a, a mixture of various songs, including a couple new songs as well. The last tour uh, was really great where you guys did, uh, was it the Yes album, Close to the Edge, and um, was it Going for the One? Yeah. Right. And That's what we're currently doing as well in Canada. Right. I know you started... Uh, you started in a Yes cover band, is that is that right? Mm-hmm. So how much of that material from this tour that you've been doing uh, was was new to you to learn, or did you were you already familiar with a lot of the more obscure songs? Let's see. Uh, I was familiar with most of the Yes album. I had never sung uh, a venture, though. And then from go, uh, Close to the Edge, yeah, I'd sung all three of those tracks. Going for the one I'd never done, Turn of the Century, or Awaken, or uh, Parallels. So there was a lot of new material there to learn. So when you are when you have to learn these songs, how much of it is uh, you wanting or needing to be, you know, 100% faithful to the originals, or how much can you sort of put your own, own spin? How does that work? Well, my first approach is to learn it exactly as it is on the album. And then once I feel like I've really given it justice to the best of my ability, then there are, are, are slight kind of personal things you can, you can add to it, which is very important, but you just don't want to disrupt the integrity of the original. Yeah. And I know and I imagine it's a really loyal, sort of hardcore fan base, right? You have to kind of walk a fine line there, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you know, it's it's easy for me, I think, because I've just been such a big fan. So I think I I'm I'm sensitive to that, and right. I know what's required. And I I've never picked up on any negative feedback that I'm taking it too far one way or the other. Right. No, I, I you know what I was actually at the show. Uh, I guess it was a year ago um, down here in Hollywood. Uh, and it was it was fantastic, and it was really great to see some of the more obscure songs that you don't get to see in previous Yes tours, which I think is the oh. treat for the for these uh, for the fans. Oh, okay, cool. How's the the new album coming? Are you guys still recording? Is it almost finished? Where are you guys in there? Well, we finished recording just in time. We had to leave. A, we let's see. We finished in the studio. Um, in fact, we were doubling up in the studio, meaning that Chris and I were still there working on background vocals. Steve was finishing guitars. At the same time, Jeff was in Wales, Alan in Seattle, and they were both sending tracks still. Mm -hmm. uh, Alan had some percussion to do, so we were just kind of throwing everything in at the last minute. And then we only had, I think, two or three days maximum before we had to start this tour. 
so <laughs> we finished <laughs> just in time. The tracks still have to be mixed, and Roy Thomas Baker will start that in a couple days. And then what he's going to do is send us um, mix examples, and then we all kind of sign off on them right. or make uh, comments about changes we f- will feel needed. And, uh, yeah, that's the way it's going to have to go because we just ran out of time. We had to get on the road. It's sort of the new norm these days of recording albums, you know, do, doing mixes online, over the Internet, and all this stuff. I'm hearing that from more and more bands that I speak to. Yeah. You had a say in, in sort of the writing process and recording this time with the band, being your, your first record with them. Uh, you know, tell me about that. And was was the was there a lot of pressure with these guys that you were fans of them and now you're in the band and you're working on a new album? And was that sort of overwhelming? I thought it might be, but it, it turned out not to be at all. I got to know them really well and their, their composing um, styles and patterns and pace. Mm-hmm. And I was all really quite comfortable with it, especially because we started one-on-one. I started in Phoenix with Chris. We solidified a few ideas together, and then I went up to Seattle and worked with Alan, and then flew to the UK and went out to the countryside with Steve, and that was great. I was there for about a week. We got a lot done as well, and then I went to Wales and worked with Jeff one-on-one. So wow. It was really uh, com- comfortable, yeah, and it, very exciting, too. So how does that work? I mean, I'm curious about that. When you're 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 going to to a different city with each one of them, and you're are you writing, what like one new song with each person, or a, a part that they that they're working on, or how how did you decide what gets written where? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think we we all did a lot of writing on our own, especially myself. I mean, I have lots of material, and when we came together, we just, we would sort of try to combine the ideas, expand the ideas. So, for example, Steve might have an idea, and I would, ha- hey, let's try this with it. Mm-hmm. And we would just kind of start blending things together, expanding concepts. Especially Jeff and I, we had a big prog piece, but unfortunately we didn't have time to finish it. So... That'll probably be on the next album, and we've got a bunch of extra material, too, that just didn't make it because of we had sufficient time length for this album, and things were just left undone, just, again, due to lack of time. How many tracks are on the album? Eight. All right, great. And I'm sure... And then there'll be a bonus track for the Japanese CD release. And I'm also. sure there's uh you know a few longer ones, shorter ones, the whole the whole gamut. Yeah, um, yeah, and I think it touches on all aspects of yes, 70s, 80s, but mainly it's a really fresh sounding album, and I feel like personally I feel like it's light years from Fly From Here. No, that was a great record too. I actually really enjoyed that yeah. one. Yeah, um, yeah, and it, it is, and 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 yet it's really exciting that you know, following that album, we can go in such a fresh new direction. When you, um, when you first got started singing, it was, was yes. And Prague, a big, a, a major influence on you, uh, starting out as a musician. Is that sort of how you ended up in this direction? Yeah. Um, I mean, yes was always there for me, but I wasn't a progressive musician per se. I was a bass player and a background vocalist. Mm-hmm. And I started writing to some degree in my first band, but we were also a cover band. Taylor Hawkins, the drummer of the Foo Fighters, and I grew up together playing music, and we had a, a cover band in high school. We were doing like alternative 80s music right. and playing dances and and all that. Um, so I don't think I really was ever too much to like the progressive bass player but I, I loved all that rush and and yes and genesis um it was later that i really took singing serious when i couldn't find a project to be involved in and then a tribute band for yes came up mm-hmm. and i you know just loving the music so much just thought i'd give it a try because i knew i had the higher voice right but i had prior to i'd never sung on a regular basis Certainly not a, at that caliber. So really, um, that was in 
I think around 2006 that I really started singing seriously. So it's really, I mean, not that long ago. I mean, it's it's sort yeah, of... Yeah, less, less than 10 years. You've had a light year progression since then. I mean, goodness. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's quite remarkable, really. It's pretty. <laughs> to think great. where I ended up in such a short amount of time. So I know you got a limited time here. I just want to touch on. Uh, so how did you get the call from Yes? It was during the time when you were in Glass Hammer, which is still a band you're in, correct? And yeah. uh, And I just want to make sure we touch on. You have a Glass new Glass Hammer album out as well. Yeah, that's right. Ode to Echo. Right. Which uh, which by the way, I also picked up, and it's great. Uh, oh, good. So, um, but uh, you're so you're in Glass Hammer at the time, and you find out about the Yes opening. I mean, how did that happen? Yeah, exactly. We were uh, between uh, our second and third album. Let's see, how did it go down? Yeah, I just got a call from Paul Silvera, our manager, and he had mentioned that Benoit was out of the band, and that a tour was planned already that they didn't want to cancel. Very important tour going down to New Zealand, Australia, Japan, etc. And they hadn't been in those regions of the world in a long time. New Zealand, for the first time, were they to go, and they just didn't want to cancel it. And that was, let's see, I think that was a month away. And I remember saying, well, when's the audition? And they told me that there won't be an audition. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty great. I mean, it, That's got to make you yeah, feel good. I, I knew at that point that the work I had done with Glass Hammer was, was obviously the the key. It, really, that was my audition, I guess. <laughs> right. I mean, and and it's uh, for anybody that knows Glass Hammer. I mean, it it uh, it's very yes similar in nature, and your voice uh, would seem an obvious fit if you listen to those records. So yeah. Sense. So I think that suffice to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and so yeah, and a month later, my wife and I took off on the road. Well, wow. that's really. Staff. I mean, that must have been out of out of nowhere. All of a sudden, you're. Um, uh, you know, a few days later, playing with uh, this band uh, that you love, and uh, completely out of nowhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's very cool. And I guess it hasn't. It sort of helped the you know Glass Hammer exposure, right? I mean, um, the and the uh, both both bands letting you kind of be in both has been probably pretty a good thing. Yeah, yeah, and and I it seems like it's been pretty good for Glass Hammer. I just feel that they deserve so much more. I I feel. I mean, even without me being in the band, I would say this. Um, they just seem uh, underrated to a degree, and I just would like to see more for them. Yeah, I agree. Any, anybody should pick up the, the new record. It's, it's fantastic. And you're, you're accompanied on cool. there with a few other singers, correct? Yeah, which is, you know, I, I mean, it was unfortunate that I wasn't more available, but at the same time, it led way to this great door opening where... You know, Susie could come back, and Carl, and, and the album has this great nostalgic feel about it. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Listen, uh, it's been a real pleasure to speak with you. Um, like I said, I have a, a lot of stuff that you've been on. I'm excited about the new record, and I uh, look forward to seeing you on tour, I guess, this summer. I think you guys are heading down my way, so I'll definitely be there. Oh, great, Roy. Okay, well, I hope to meet you. Yeah, absolutely, man. That'd be great. All right, have a have a good day, and I'll see you. All right, good interview. You ask good questions. That doesn't <laughs> good. always happen. Uh, that's awesome. Great, man. Thank you. <laughs> All right, take care. Bye. Thanks to John for the interview. For more news and upcoming interviews, please check thepargreport.com. Thanks. Thanks.